Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Just gonna collect the eggs again, as we don't very often do this. I know I did do it um, only a couple of weeks ago actually. I have bought a few more cows, we don't have hundreds of them, we have 149 altogether now. Uh, we may go and buy some more. Um, I'm thinking actually we'll wait until next year. If we do buy more, it will be next year, not uh, this year. But, um, yeah, so I'm not ruling out buying more cows, but we're not going to get any just yet. Now, um, the question that I asked you all last week was, which tractor did you want me to buy? Cows are doing quite nicely in here. Um, we'll just take a quick look over here. There we go. There is all of our new cows. All very happy. So, yeah, which tractor did you want me to buy? We'll go through this very quickly. Um, did you want me to get... Uh, I listed a load of... Um, uh, in the region of 190 horsepower tractors. And i gotta be, I got to say, I was a little surprised at the answers. Um, the Fent 700 Vario, the JCB Fast Track 300. Now, with the upgrades, they were all around 190 horsepower. So I would have upgraded each and every single one of them to approximately... Um, the 190 horsepower. We had this Ursus right here. It would have been the 18014A. And finally, we had this Ford TW here. It's actually the TW35 to make, uh, I think it's 186 horsepower, is it? The 35 is 187 horsepower. I was actually thinking that we'd get the ones with the mudguards. Um, as that's the one that I used to drive. I, I think, I'm, I'm certain that it was a TW that I used to drive. But anyway, um... So, yeah, uh, the Ursus had a total of 192 votes. Uh, we had 2,638 people vote altogether. I'm still getting a lot of comments from people saying that they can't vote. Um, so the Ursus back there had 192. The JCB had 555. The Faint had 665. And this Ford had 1,226. i got to say I was quite surprised. I genuinely thought that the um, JCB or the Faint would be the ones to win. Now, the, the Faint did win on the first day. It had by far the most votes on the first day. The JCB has been um, second on two days and third on the first day and then the Ford has really taken it it really jumped into the lead so the Ford is the one that you want me to get which um is also actually the cheapest one that we can get and we will get beacons now which uh, I'd say we'll just we'll have one beacon on the right hand side rather than any extras and uh now I don't I'm guessing a 70 profile is a wider tire so um we're going to go for the wider tire because that helps to reduce compaction um, and we will stick with a dark grey grill rather than having a light one. Uh, yeah, we will go for the dark one. We will keep the dark one on there. So we're going to buy that one straight away. That's one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to purchase that tractor. And if I just come out of here, my question for this week is we're going to be combining fairly soon. I'm hoping actually we'll get started on combining before the end of this week. Um, so once we do get going with the combining, what do you want me to bale up the straw with? Do you want me to stick with the round baler that we've got, which is that one there that we've got on lease, this Deutzfahr, um, very master? Um, or would you like me to upgrade just fraction and go for this Massey Ferguson square baler right here? Um... I'm think uh, I was gonna I was looking at some of the other ones, um, but they're very very expensive. The, these other balers are very expensive. Even if we go for one of this um, pack here, we've got um, various different ones, and then you've got um, like these. These are a hundred grand. Um, that's a very expensive baler. So rather than buying anything like that, um, we do have this old Massey Ferguson one here, which is still uh, pushes out a standard big bale. Um, so yeah, do you want us to stick with round bales for doing the straw? Um, for this harvest or should we go for square bales using the Massey Ferguson square baler? It's your vote, it's your game. Head in the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why. And of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. Now then, we have got to um, feed our animals now and if you take a look through here, we have 149. Uh, next animal is in 11 hours so we should get a few more animals before the end of summer. Um, we need to make up a couple mixes of power food and we need to get more grass, we need to get straw in and water, so we, we've got to do the whole shebang. Um, we don't have very much straw left, we've got a single solitary bale of straw that is left, that is all we own. And we're mid-summer now, 
I don't think we're going to be ready to start harvesting until autumn. Uh, if we take a look at the growth, we're on the final stage here, but even when it goes to harvestable in the field, it's still not actually harvestable. I think, though, the beginning of autumn, we'll be ready to harvest most of this and most of this, which means that we've basically got to go um, several days. We've got to go to day 12, and we're on day 5. So we're going to need more straw. So I'm going to have to get more straw from the dealership. Um, other than that, we're going to be all right. So if we get some... Let's just jump into here. And we'll get that. We'll dump that bale in for bedding. And then as we're all set up at the moment for round bales, we will go and get round bales from the dealership. Um, we're going to have to watch the weather. It doesn't look like it's going to rain, so we may not even have to worry about um, putting the straw bales into the shed. So let's just drop that one in there. Should just be able to drop it in, and yes, it does get used up. So let's just check now what we are with... St straw is full. So that's completely filled up with straw. We don't need to worry about that. We need grass, and then we need to make up some power food. Now, that means that we're going to... Whoa. Easy. Easy, tiger. That means we're going to need to go and run the trailer up to the dealership. Let's just switch that one off. We've got silage because we've got that bale there, plus we've got the six over by the gate over there. Um, so silage will be just fine. We've got our standard trailer there, and that trailer over there is a um, is the autoload trailer. Now, what did I do with... There's our new tractor. First of all, we'll take a look at the new tractor. And, yes, the tyres are wider on the back. Absolute beast of a tractor. The only thing with this one is it doesn't have front links, so we're going to have to use the Deutz for doing our... Um, I think Deutz is right there. We're going to have to use that one for doing... Um, our grass because we're not going to be able to use this one obviously with a, a front mounted mower and the other thing um, This one does 31 kilometers. So it's a slow box on it. Very slow box on it. Let's have a look inside um, This isn't the one that I used to drive actually It's a little bit different unless they've just done the cab layout a bit different, but yeah, it's still a beast of a tractor It's still an absolute beast of a tractor. It's fantastic so we're just going to park this one up here. We will be using it later. I love the black smoke. I really do. I love the mods that take the time to add the black smoke to them because the standard ones, they don't do very much in the way of black. It's, you can sometimes get it a little bit darker, but it's not very black smoke. Um, whereas the some of the um, some of the mods that come out, and, and also the big bud, the big bud really belches out black smoke. I really do love that. It's, it's such an awesome effect. And very realistic for an old uh, tractor, or old machine. So I'll run up to the farm. I'll get the trailer. I'll get it back to the dealership. And I'm going to buy two lots. I'll buy 16 bales of straw. That'll be enough to keep us going. Um, actually, you know what? I think we could probably get away with eight. Yeah, I think eight will probably be enough. Um, and then we're going to... Once we've... I've chucked in a little bit of power food as well. The, the total mixed ration. We're going to dump a, a front mower onto this tractor and the um, forage wagon. We've got the old forage wagon. We're going to run those to the dealership. We're going to sell the old forage wagon and we're going to buy a new forage wagon. And then we're going to go and get a bit of grass. And the reason I'm doing that, I mean, we don't really need to. It's just that several people have said you really do need to upgrade the, um, the forage wagon. And a lot of you are kind of getting a bit fed up with the one that we've got. So I figured, yeah, you know, why not? We'll do that. Um, and so, so that we've got that little upgrade there. Um, and then, hopefully, that's going to be about it. That, um, you know, everything that we need to do. We'll get the, the getting the power food in is, is sort of the most important thing. But I'll do a few bits here and then get the trailer up to the dealership so we can get some straw. Sometimes it's nice to go along with a good bird's eye view of the entire area. Absolutely fantastic being able to drive along like this. Right. We need some bales, so let's just skip out here and go to the shop. We're going to buy two lots of straw bales, although I'm actually thinking we could probably get away with just one lot of straw bales. And we'll do round bales because it's... it is eight bales. Um, I don't know. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go for two. Right, because um, uh, the only reason I'm sort of umming and eyeing is because actually, well, we'll have to run back to the shop again in order to be able to get them if we um, 
do it and it's just going to end up taking too much time so if we just do it like this it'll be a lot quicker so we go to here and then we want um couple settings isn't this the auto load trailer wait a minute i'm sure this was the auto load trailer pass intention mails help a setting stop engine so which one's the auto load trailer? We definitely had an auto. I, I did go and get an auto load because we decided that we wanted an auto load. It would just be better all round if we had it. Uh, bailing technology, and we come up through here, and it should be, should be, yes. That oh no no, it's it's the different lades on it, isn't it? Um, the one that we got is that one there. This isn't the auto load trailer. Uh, I think we do actually have that one back at the yard though don't we um no oh we don't have any auto load trailer right so what we're going to do today is we're going to sell this trailer and we're going to buy an auto load trailer that was what the plan was i knew i was going to do something with an auto load trailer and i thought for some reason i thought we already had it um because we did discuss this and um i got the impression from most people that yes you like the realism that i'm trying to do but you don't want excessive realism because it just it becomes a bit much um it, it becomes a little bit too much to watch so we're going to go for mostly realism so we can sell that one there and by um doing it this way with the auto load now do we go for a 10 meter or just an eight? i think we'll just go for an eight meter we will go for a turntable trailer rather than a flat. Um, we're going to tell. Uh, oh, decisions, decisions. Uh, we'll go for the, we'll go for the turntable one. Um, it is harder to back these up, but uh, ladders. Do we want the ladders on it? We'll. T I know that if the the problem with the ladders on this one is it's a great design and everything, and they would be used if we were manually loading, but because we're not. It kind of looks a little bit peculiar, the way that loads are done on the trailers. And, yeah, so I think we'll go for straight. We can always add them on later on because we are buying it. So let's back out of there. That's done. Jump on here. There is our new trailer. And we can get that one loaded up straight away and then run these bales back. I've already loaded the cows up with water. Uh, they've got straw in. I've um, put in a part load on the... Um, just hitch that one on there we go i put a part load in on the um the feed mixer right we square bales we're on at the moment we want round bales ah, i see you can select the different sizes but we just want standard round bales and we got 1.4 1.5 hd which is small bales which is really useful um and then pallets so we don't have loads of extras on this one it does make it nice and quick to work through so then you just go work position that's most of them um, and come around this way that should get the rest of them there we go and then you stop loading and now we want to unload which is Y and then L for so if you unload it puts them straight on and then we just put the um, straps on before they can roll off the back I suppose that is why you would have the lades on the back um, see I always we always refer to them as lades as a, as a, as a trailer lade as a lade um whether it um but i never really see that referred to anywhere else so whether that's just a term from where i grew up um i'm not really sure but i mean what what do you guys call the, the bits at the front and the back of the trailer it just it calls them ladders on the um description in the shop but i never i never referred to them as ladders i've, I've never really heard them referred to as ladders either um we'll see yeah, let me know in the comment section, what do you call them? I'll run these back to the yard, we can get some of them unloaded, and we can get a load of power food in. Then the next thing we need to do is rush off and get a little bit of grass with this one, and uh, we need a new um, forage wagon as well. And one other thing that I will be doing is I will be getting rid of the combine that we've got. We've got a case combine at the moment. Um, we will take that one to the dealership and we will sell that one before we start our harvest and we will buy another one. We're going to use the Massey Ferguson one um, the, in the pack because the updated black sheep modding old Massey Ferguson pack has now got a Massey Ferguson combine in it and we're going to use that one. Um, a few people have been saying that I should get the class dominator because those are quite common around Eastern Europe 
So we might, if we've got the money, buy two combines. And we could have the Massey Ferguson running here, doing the wheat around the farm here. And then we could run the, um, the class Dominator up the other side. Um, and we could use that one up top. You know, I really think actually we should have put the ladders on this trailer because this is just going to end up causing us trouble, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I, tell you, I know what we can do. We can unload them here. So if I do that and then if I see they're going to roll off the front, that's just going to cause us problems. So if you load them, stop loading and then you go B to select the side that you want to unload and then we unload them like that. Or we can drop them down there and they're a little bit tight to this trailer, which I'm now going to cause myself all sorts of problems by tipping them everywhere doesn't really matter they're not staying there so if we come down here we just pull down a little bit further there we can unhitch this trailer there and then we can jump into the other one get that feed mixer on the back and we can stick a load in for the cows we'll probably have to put a little bit more in before the end of the day but we can live with that so uh, jump off of there and then we want to hitch that one on and we want to put the uh, PTO in um, incidentally those of you who are watching my time-lapse series on Dowland Farm are probably aware now that a new update has come out for the Dowland Farm map and it is actually the finalized version of the one that I was using I was given this version early and they've done a load more work on it um, and so now the publicly released version is different to the one that I'm using however it's because of the significant changes on it I'm not able to port my save game over so I'll be keeping the private um, sort of the private edit one really um, for running my series on um, but the updated fully seasons compatible and chop straw compatible and everything else compatible uh, Dowland Farm is now available to take off of Mod Hub it, it looks fantastic They've now added a multi-angle terrain that we've got on this one. And for the big fields, uh, especially with like the odd shapes and stuff, multi-angle terrain is absolutely fantastic. It is a real godsend. You'll be really pleased that they've stuck that in there for you. Um, and yeah, it, so it's, it's there. It's available to use. Go and have some fun with it. It's fantastic. I was going to try to do a sort of a tour video of it, but I'm not sure if I'm going to have time until much later in the week. So I'm just letting everybody know now, just so that you know that it's there, because it is so worth having a look at. It's a fantastic map. I am having so much fun playing that map. It's absolutely brilliant. So I really recommend that you go and get it. Um, and also try the Seasons with it. Seasons is brilliant. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Although, as we've learned here, don't put, for goodness sake, don't put it on 12 days. I found that um, having the nine days per season, as I'm doing in Dowland at the moment, that works really well. It's um, it's actually, like, it surprised me how well it's worked out. Right, power food. We could do with another load of this, but we won't do it just yet. What I'll do is, if I can come round here, I'll drive up through and I'll spin round and then come back and drop this one off and then we can always load it up a little bit later if we need to. Um, I want to nip up to the forest now so uh, with the uh, forage wagon we want to get our new forage wagon and get some grass back for the cows so that they have grass and then that's about it really. Um, we've sort of caught up on most of our early summer work and um, the only thing that is left to do now is We've got a little bit of fertilizing that we still need to do. If you look at the soil composition here, right. Everything here is fertilized. These have got two layers of fertilizer on. We can't do any more until the first growth stage comes through. And if you look at growth, you'll see that these are very early on. Uh, they've got, it's like on the first stage, I think it is. Um, so they've got a lot still to go. So let's just jump down and unhitch that one, right. We'll leave the weight over near where these are. I'm going to get this hitched on and I'll meet with the dealership so that we can sell this old clapped out piece of um, metal. And we'll just lower that one down. Once we have sold the old clapped out piece of metal, we can get a better forage wagon. Although, to be honest, um, I've not really had any complaints with it. Um, there, there, there's nothing actually wrong with that one. And it does the job. I'm wondering if maybe the other one has got a faster speed on it or something. Um, but yeah, so I was I was quite surprised that everybody did pick the um, the Ford. I was I genuinely surprised at that. I thought it was bound to be either the Faint or the JCB. Um, I know that several people were asking me to get Ursus, which is why I made sure to include an Ursus in the vote. 
Um, and I was a little bit surprised at how few votes the Ursus ended up getting. Um, but it just goes to show that, um, you know, you can't always sort of judge these things. You know, um, it, it frequently the, um, the results of the votes do surprise me. Um, but I've had a lot of requests to get rid of this old forager now, the, the forage wagon, and to start using something a slightly newer. Um, so that is what we'll do. I mean, it does work all right, but I mean, in real life, the reason that people don't really use these is because they're not very good. Um, they do tend to leave a load of stuff behind, and it's not easy to empty them either. You can't empty them like you can in the game. Um, you do have to manually help it out quite a bit. Um, and that's why nobody, nobody uses them anymore. Anyway, we'll get over to the dealer. There is that one ready to sell. So let's get rid of that. 5,597 euros. And now we run over to the shop and we buy ourselves a new one. Um, we don't need a massive loading wagon. Um, we certainly don't need anything like that. We couldn't pull that one even if we wanted it. And those are the ones there. The Mengel one... I'm, we did use it. I'm not keen on it. So we're going to go for just a standard Pottinger Euroboss. 21,000 litres is... I think... I don't think we actually need any more than that. I don't think we're going to need anything that big. So we go for a nice little one like this. Select. Buy. 31,000 euros. Job done. It's back out of there. And yes, the combine that we're going to be getting. Now, I I said about the um, the Massey Ferguson one. That one right there is the one that we're going to be getting. But we could also get this class Dominator. Um, I think that would be a really cool one to get as well. Dominators, there's a lot of those uh, all over Europe. It was a really popular combine for a while. Because they don't make them anymore. But there's a lot of second-hand ones. The second-hand market for those old Dominators is still really big. So you see a lot of them around. Um, and that's a very small corn header. There is the one for the Dominator, I think. Six metre header. That one there is also a six metre header. I'm sure that's the um, Dominator one. Just come up through. This one is for the C600. Yes, it is. So that, um, that header, yeah, we've got a six metre header for that one and a six metre header for the Massey Ferguson. So I could have, I very well might buy both. That's those, yeah, so the class one is actually, um, oops. The, the Dominator, I'm, I'm clicking the wrong place. There we go, right. Uh, oh, there's only 46,000. So we could actually afford to buy both of those combines and run them both. That could be quite interesting. We'll run two tractors. Um, one up the top will be dealing with the canola. Um, and one at the bottom will be dealing with the, uh, all the wheat. And then obviously we've got all the straw coming off of that as well. I think that could work out really well. I think that could I think that could be a really good way to do things. So we have a dom... Um, just put it in the comment section because then I might have time to see it before I record uh, Wednesday's episode. Um, where do you think I should put the combines? Um, I'm going to get the Massey Ferguson and I'm going to get the Class Dominator. We're going to get rid of the uh, case that we've got. And then um, which, which sides do you think I should put them? Do you think I should have the Dominator doing the wheat or do you think I should have the old Massey doing the wheat? Because obviously... Oil seed rate is a much lighter prop. It's much easier for the combine to deal with it. Um, doing... Uh, oh, actually, I might be able to do fertilizer on those fields now. I might do that between this episode and the next one. Quickly fertilize that field. Well, those two fields and the one down the other end. So that all of our fields are fertilized. Yeah, which would you like to see? Would you like me to do... Um, do you think the Massey should attempt to do the wheat or do you think we should put the dominator on the wheat personally i think the dominator would be better able to handle it wheat is a very very heavy crop now i remember my dad um many years ago trying to put some wheat through an old massive focus and combine much older than the one that we've got available there um a very ancient old massive focus and combine that he had and quite frankly wheat didn't have make it grunt it was a real struggle for the machine it, ju it just didn't like it um wheat was like yeah it, it just didn't work um wheat was not going to happen um it, it did do it but it really it, it absolutely grunted and bellowed and belched out black smoke and it was a genuine genuine struggle and he didn't do it again because he didn't want to destroy his combine um he's do a bit of barley and he said oats are really good because oats um it's a very very slippery straw oats and so they slide through the combine very easily so he found oats to be one of the better crops to do 
Um, but he also did some barley as well because he did it for feed for his cows. Uh, he was a dairy farmer. Um, and the only reason that he did the did a bit of... It's only a little bit of arable and he used to do it to grow a little bit of feed for the cows so that he didn't have to buy it in. Because it was actually in those days, it was cheaper to grow your own. These days, it does tend to sort of border on being more expensive to do it that way. Um, which is why most farmers don't bother now. Um, but yeah, so wheat really did make the old, old combine struggle. So I'm thinking that the Massey Ferguson of the two is probably going to be the one that's going to struggle the most. And therefore, we should put the Dominator on the wheat and we should put the Massey on the um, canola. Now, obviously, in game, we're not going to have that issue. It's not going to be a struggle. It'll just uh, plow through whichever one we stick it in front of. Um, but this is a series that is based around realism. So I want to hear your opinions. Do you know anything about the Massey Ferguson that it's based off of? The one, the, the one in the pack. Um, obviously, the one in the pack is a little bit different to um, the one that my dad used. The one that my dad used was a much older combine than that one. So, you know, there are differences. There are significant differences to be had between the two. Um, it, and it might be that um, the combine that we're going to be using, some of you are familiar with. Uh, you know, is, is that one, like, able to cope with the wheat just fine? Is it, is it going to have, like, no problems at all um, whipping through that and, yeah, make no difference? Um, so, opinions? Let me know what you think about it all. And... Um, yeah, we, we can sort of make our decision based on uh, any actual facts that some of you can get back to me. And if I just lift up there, this tractor is actually a lot better able to cope with this job than the New Holland. I know this ground is really, really rough, and we probably wouldn't really be doing this, because th this is like some seriously rough ground that we're trying to drag this through, and um, it's, it's going to be giving the mower some serious abuse. Um, and not to mention the fact that the grass growing underneath um, pine trees like this is going to be very, very thin and, you know, it's, it's going to be sparse. So we're not going to get a great deal of it. But we're getting enough. I think we're going to take it up to about 10,000 litres in the trailer and then we can head back and we are pretty much done. We're, we're, caught, we're sort of caught up so we can start speeding up and get our way through the summer so that we can get towards harvest time. And that's... That's the bit that we want next. We want to be getting some harvest. So I will meet you back at the yard so that we can tip out this grass. I think that will do, actually. We'll, we'll call it a day with that. So let's just switch that one off and fold it up. Yeah, I'll meet you back at the yard. There we go. One load of grass back here for the cows. It's not too far to have to run to do that. Although it would be better if we could just buy a another grass field near the yard so that we could do it here. Um... It's making sure that you don't cut too much. That's kind of the key to zero grazing, is you don't want to cut too much um, to put in for the cows. So at the moment, so grass, that's actually about right. That's, that's about what we want there. Um, so we can start thinking about doing some more power food for them now. So if I run this over here, I'm not going to need to worry about this one for about three days now. It's the one dis the, like the biggest disadvantage of using the seasons it drops you back with three days of food but not only that the other sort of issue that i've got is that because we're on 12 i'm having to stop to feed the cattle a lot more than if we were on fewer days now the other side of the coin though is that if you were on fewer days when you do have to feed the cattle you have to give them a lot more because they've actually averaged everything out so if you run it on three days per season you still end up across the course of the year um, giving your cows exactly the same amount as if you were running it on 12 days per season. It's just on three days per season, you've only actually got to feed them four times in the entire year. Whereas if you're running it on 12 days per season, you got to run it, you got to feed them four times per season rather than four times per year. So it does sort of slow things down quite a bit, um, running it with, uh, running it like this. But we've got to feed them less often, and that's. That's kind of a good thing because um, if you're using, um, like because because we got the, the whole seasons thing going um, and we're using, actually no, not the seasons thing, sorry, um, the small mixed feeder wagon that we're using here. Now I'm using a bigger one now on um, my Dowland farm. I've got the, the big pecan mixer. And the reason I'm using the Pecan Mixer is because it, um, 
Hang on. Just want to open that one up and grab that. I shouldn't have dropped that. Um, yeah, the, I'm using the bigger mixer because I'm having to put so much food in for them. I'm actually using more than a big mixer full each time. So it, it kind of made sense to go and get the big mixer. It's difficult to get it in around the yard. Um, whereas here at the moment, we're probably okay with using the small one. We certainly aren't going to be using a big mixer full. But we're planning to change the time scale over in the winter. We're going to change it to... Um, uh, nine days per season or even six days per season. I'm thinking probably nine, but uh, we, we may still we may still go with um, six um, We change that over in the winter and then Hopefully it will uh, make the change successfully without doing any damage to the game and then we can start um, Right, we got no way of telling if this is actually silage yet unless we swap over the grab and put a spike on and then spike the bale But I'm gonna take a risk and I'm just going to drop it into the Actually, it shouldn't drop it. I don't think it would be able to go into the feeder if it's um, hay because um, those mixed feeders don't accept grass. So, yeah, if, if it's grass, it's not going to accept it. It did accept it, and it's now total mixed ration. So they have turned into silage. That's excellent. So we'll stop there. Um, yeah, we could end up next year wanting the giant pecan mixer to feed our cows because we're going to have more cows by then. Um, and the extra food that you've got to put in every three days is going to mean that we, we really are going to need something bigger. It's, it's going to make a significant difference to us. So, yeah, we'll, we'll think about getting the Pecan Mixer for next time. I might hunt around for some mods because that's the problem. We've got this one at 16,000 and you've got the Pecan Mixer, which is 64,000. If we could have one that was 32,000, that would be absolutely perfect. Oh, it would help if we put the PTO shaft on, I suppose. Um... There we go. Right. Yeah, if you had one that was 64,000, that would make a significant difference. Um, there we go. Uh, not 64,000, 32,000. So double the size of this, but not the giant pecan mixer. That would be like the ideal quantity. Because 32,000, you can put in two bales of straw, two bales of silage, and four bales of hay. You've got the exact right um, mixing ratios on it. So, I mean, that's why the pecan mixer is 64,000 because you do, it's, it's in blocks of four. Um, so that that would work out really well for us if we could find one of those. Right, that is almost exactly full. So we can start loading up the next one. I'm going to jump forward in time. And we'll do it like that. Right, my question for this week is, what baler would you, I don't think, I've got a sneaky suspicion I may have asked a baler related question already on this series. I really hope not, and if I have, I sincerely apologise, but um, I don't think I did. I don't believe I have asked a baler related question. Um, I mean, I, I really do apologise if I have, it's it's kind of, it's, it's not very good if I have already asked one. But, um, if I haven't, my question is, do we keep the round baler that we've already got, um, or do we go for, let me just, where's the bailing stuff? Bailing, bailing technology, there. Um, yeah, do we have this Massey Ferguson square baler here, or do we go for the round, the Deutz Far Very Master round baler that we've already got? Um, there. Uh, that, that we've already got. We got it on lease rather than own, but we've still got it. So we're using that one at the moment. So do we use that one for our summer straw, or do we use that massive ferguson square baler right there it's a quite an old one um and do it all in square bales rather than round bales is your vote is your game head in the comment section down below let us know which one you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner now we just see if i can load up another one of these oh i've got bale on top there it's gonna end up tipping it over that's all right i'll run the risk uh tipped several bales over and there goes some more We'll have to feed those first. <laughs> all that neat stacking. I was really proud of my stacking that I did there. I did really, really well. And now I've dumped it all on the floor. So it's just not the way to behave, is it? And... Oh, no, no. I'm trying to close it. There we go. Open that one up. Excellent. Right. Um, so, yes. I will just load this one up. And we will keep the time ticking away quite rapidly through the summer. I will also go and do some fertilizer spreading um, before I see you again. And I think then we'll be ready. We're, we're, we're sort of waiting on... We, it's, it's kind of a waiting game now. Um, and this is kind of unfortunate because the time that it's going to take 
for us to get through the whole of the rest of the summer. Um, but I'll do some of this off camera and then I'll come back and I'll do some of it on camera for next episode. Just so as you can sort of get an idea. I had a few people saying that I should do, um, like, uh, do more fertilizer in the summer to kind of break things up a bit rather than doing so much while I plant. And yeah, I might do that. I'm not quite sure yet. We'll see. Um, but that, that, that'll be sort of in the next year's stuff rather than this year's stuff. Um, anyway. If you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give me a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.